so no one wants to tag along, you can actually scan this QR code and open it uh, in oh, your browser. Let me share the screen. Check it out. Hold on. There, there's that QR code if you want to follow. Yes. Along. You can That's scan cool. that. And yeah, so you can tag along uh, while we yeah. move through this. Um, uh, we are going to talk about what you can do uh, since we're no longer restrained by parts and are using something called ESM. Yeah, so I've been I've been on a flight for like fourteen hours. So so can you explain <laughs> ESM to someone who is uh, who is a little jet lagged? Yes, uh, ESM is a standard format for sharing JavaScript. So it it's not connected to any kind of build, a bundler system like our V two was, and uh, it's universal. So it even works without bundlers. And what it allows us to do is that we can uh, install Sanity as just a package in uh, an application you already have. Uh, what we're looking at here is an example of that. This is a V3 Studio uh, running inside of Next. And since we're using ESM and uh, uh, V, the code for loading this is just a few lines of code. Yeah. And the way so you install it is, yeah, this NPM install, that's it. Yeah, and, and so this is, this is, you know, when you spin up a studio with a CLI, you get something that is basically a wrap around this. Um, but yes. then, you know, because it's ESM, because we're doing, we don't have our custom Webpack parts system and all that anymore, um, mm -hmm. you're able to actually pull this in just as a regular React component, right? Yes, and and like right off the bat, I find that um, awesome because I hate configuring new stuff, uh, and this way. Most people Sorry. already have an application. Real quick, I have to stop you. Everyone's asking for the yeah. QR code. A lot of people didn't get it in time. <laughs> so if you sure. can show it one more time. I'll just keep it open. Um, this will be a nice stress test for, <laughs> for the studio yeah. and okay. what we're doing later. Um, so don't peek ahead. You're only allowed to see what we're sharing. Okay, that's the rule. <laughs> Don't make me don't make me think, have to ask Simeon or someone how we kick people out. I don't know. So anyway. Um, yes, uh, it, it is um, a game changer, in my opinion. Um, it makes things easier. Like, this is all the code you need to get started. No more. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to learn any sanity commands to get started anymore. Yeah. And you can take it as far as you, as you want. And so, uh, yeah, you can host it as part of an existing application and not just with Next.js. Like, we're using Next.js here because it's really common yes. um, and it's pretty easy to get started with. But you can put it anywhere you can put React now, which is basically anywhere, yes. right? So, um, Even I have an example here of um, what it looks like. Uh, let's open that. Uh, it's one of these. There we go. Yeah, uh, where, there we go. Uh, so we, we can even, um, in the future, I just paste the snippet anywhere. So this is just a normal import from a CDN. There's no bundling, paste it in an HTML file, and that, that's all you need. So th this is the- Pure JavaScript. Yes, pure JavaScript, HTML, you're up and running, zero bundling, zero nothing. You can paste this on top of WordPress if you want. And uh, yeah. OK, so, so what can we do with this? If, we, if we're iterating on the studio, so we have this really basic studio. And it's really cool because it's hosted in our Next.js app, right? Um, but yeah, if and we it's the next iterate thing. on that, right? Um, what's, yeah, what's the, next thing? the next thing is that um, now that we are hosting ne uh, Sanity inside of Next, it means that all the stuff that this uh, site is using, stuff like Tailwind and all that stuff, is already set up. So if I want to do something like previewing a component, like for example, if you want to preview something like a, yeah. Oh, did the video cut out or the sound? No, keep on going. Yeah, uh, if you want to preview a component uh, in isolation, uh, that's not very easy to do. So we have a studio here uh, that uh, shows you the hero a component in different variations that they can render in. So you can just toggle between them. And since it's a sanity studio, we, you can of course see more of them. At the same time, which is really nice when you're working on a on a design. Yeah. So so you're able to pull in here. You're pulling in your components um, just as they yes. are, right? I think the code here is really simple. We're just pulling in the exact same. Components. It is in the past. You could do this in the past, 
but it wasn't always the easiest because of the webpack configuration and pulling in. Yeah, you would you would have to set everything up the same way. So if you use Tailwind, you would have to set up Tailwind again. If you use anything else, yeah, you always had all this double work. But now, uh, if you import uh, the post body this way in your app, you import it in the preview in the same way. It's the same exact. You paste it in. Put it in a uh, structure builder, put it in there, tell it when to render, and it, then it just does. So it's a it's a joy to work with. Um, and we are just getting started, by the way. There's so much yeah. more we can do with this. Yeah. So so what if we what if we flip the script on its head? Okay. So we've we've pulled preview into the studio and we've been doing that, right? What if we yes. instead of pulling preview into the studio, we pull the studio into preview? Well, well, here I'm all the way to the post. It's very annoying if I have to go all the way back to the studio to figure out how to edit this page. It's also annoying to lose context of the page. So one thing we've done in this demo is to put the studio in a bottom sheet. So if I scroll up a little bit, you see the header up here? Oh, I should have thought about the button placement. We'll, we'll edit the text instead. <laughs> so we have some text up here, and we can edit it. Wait, I have a, I have a great idea. You can actually, uh, if you open this page here, <laughs> you can see it live. Anyway, uh, you can put things in, in uh, components, and you can put them in um, even more places. So one really cool experimental thing we're doing here uh, is that we are showing who's editing what. So we can see that there's six people editing another post right this moment. So if we open the same so thing. So what, what we're doing here basically is we're pulling apart the the, the studio components, right? So yes. now that the, the studio here. itself is, you know, the first example we showed had the one studio component, right? Um, and that just yes. is easy to just plop in. But now that we have, you know, with we can expand and pull apart the other pieces because it's very composable. So um, I think the the example. Um, with here is you have a provider that's a studio provider. Maybe if we pull up that yeah. code and take a look at how that is configured, because now now you get access to anything that the studio has access to, and so you can make your yeah. own. You know, a so, really so this, great editorial experience. I find that yeah, I find that so amazing because it used to be this thing that you had to only run into when you tried to customize this small bit of sanity, and then you suddenly have to learn how stuff like presence work. But now, with Sanity betting on ESM and becoming modular, you can take this cool feature and you can put it in all these other, these other places. Like here we are on a post, right? What if we go to the front page? Can we take a look at what people are doing in real time with the other posts? I don't know. Let's do a refresh and see if it does. This is live, so it's all, all is forgiven, right, if it doesn't work right now. I hope. Well, I'll do a quick little trick. Hang on a second. So many, I've never seen this many uh, <laughs> presence indicator in a demo studio before. All right, let's see if they show up. Well, I don't see them, but yeah, you get the idea. And um, we can build further upon this. Uh, it was mentioned earlier that we have the ability to theme sanity. That's why we have a pretty cool dark mode, right? Now that we have a, a modular sanity, uh, you could do more interesting things like um, instead of trying to recreate how a studio looks, if you want to customize it, you can just include the studio itself. And it could be a live instance where you can look at different uh, UIs you already have. And then as you change it, maybe you have some presets or testing, everything is in live and in sync, which makes it so much easier to iterate on designs. Um, yeah, for example, the, these, these split screen studios that you're showing down at the bottom, they, they are in sync because they are layout components that are sharing the same yes. contract provider, right? So uh, I think I showed, they described the- I showed the, very briefly uh, yeah, earlier. The, like the, the favorite thing is, since it's so composable, you see here's a studio component, right? But it's just a composition of two other components that are called a, uh, I'll just open the playground directly so you can see it. If the editor wants to work, maybe it doesn't. Oh, it does. All right. Um, we go there and uh, it's called 
Studio layout. There we go. So you have two, two components. Uh, you have the layout that is like the inner part, and you have the provider that is the outer part. Uh, so normally, I'll just paste it up here. Norm uh, the, the way it is composed is uh, like this. You have the provider at the top, and then you have the layout inside. And the really cool thing about this is that normally you don't need to think about how this works at all. But whenever you want to do something, like in this case here, where I want to control the routing so that they are in sync with each other, and I want one to always be light and the other always dark, but only when I'm in split screen, because we're in off split screen, I want it to be in sync with my browser, right? These sort of advanced um, uh, customizations when it's really, really nice uh, that Sanity gives you the ability to like, explode it into smaller pieces so you can override very specific parts of the system so you don't have to learn or know about all the other parts that you're not uh, trying to customize. So if we take this one more step, like we've we've looked at a few things, maybe just recap real quick, right? We've looked at, okay, we can yeah. see we can embed a studio in another application, great. Uh, we can embed, um, you know, preview components and different components of that application in the studio. We can yes. embed parts of the studio into an application, and we can kind of expand that, uh, maybe that distance between the providers and mm -hmm. the data level and the, the presentation level to inject neat things like your your experiment here with um, yes. with presence on the front end, right? Um, yeah. But uh, one of the other things that's really useful here is kind of the studio configuration. So um, there's Absolutely. cases where you want to be able to configure the studio um, and mm -hmm. do things that are async or do things that are reactive, a lot like you've shown here, um, and make oh, them yeah. kind of really um, rich editorial experiences kind of a little bit more on the fly. I think that's there actually, some questions from the community earlier on those. That's actually my favorite part about Sanity, because this is a, this is a pretty good example of that, of both how Sanity fills a gap that I always like look to try and fill, and how it plays its API so well together. Uh, first off, these sort of UIs are horrible for people to work with if you weren't the one that designed it. It's very, like, I know exactly how this thing works, but I pity the fool who tries to come like, and figure it out after me. But we have this cool thing in our images where every image uploads our API, uh, analyzes and picks out the uh, like um, seven, no, seven uh, th this color palette uh, of uh, uh, a couple of vibrant colors, a dominant one, and a few muted ones. And by combining these, you can create a theme. And this is my favorite part about Sanity, because even if, if you know how to make this sort of thing, you don't want to do all this stuff every time you make it something like a new design, right? You want it to be automatic and nice to use. And that's where Sanity is such joy for someone that creates like creative stuff to then create really nice editorial experiences. So I've created this, uh, I call it like the Super Studio. Um, we've showed you three studios so far. Uh, the blog, pro blog, and max pro blog, but there's one called Themer, and it controls them all. So, it can, so it can theme them. So let's just step back for a second to yes. um, before because before we get into this one, because this one, like I think we're um, yeah, it's a lot, blowing a lot of minds here, right? So this one, yes. I think we'll we'll take it to the next level. So let's just back up a little bit, and maybe um, if we can pull up those code examples that we had as well, um, going from mm -hmm. how do we how do we pull in the um, just the, the baseline studio, right? The, the simplest yes. example. Right? Uh, the simplest the example is that you already have the config and then you just put it in the studio. And that's what you can do in the studio already today. Right. And this is really cool studio, when, you, when you, yeah. The studio component is just an export from our NPM package, right? It's, it's part yeah. of the package oh, that you'll get okay. when you, um, that when you, you know, start with like the sanity. Mm -hmm. that, uh, Workflow, but it's just it's just an export of our NPM package, right? And but that's what's really that provides, amazing. Yeah, that provides everything out of the box. Yes, it is. Uh, everything you need, uh, like as basics, and then you can go in the different layers, right? Because when you have an app like Next that has data loading capabilities, you have really interesting new uh, possibilities. So, so that's what we are using here, uh, where we have one studio that has data about the colors of the others. And then can feed it into the studio. I'll just pull it up here. So we have like a studio wrapping a studio, um, and it's called Workspaces. There we go. 
But, uh, so we have the get server props API from Next, where we are using Grok to fetch out the theme studios dataset. It just loads up all the color configs for that. And all we do is then, after we have it, we just wrap it on top of our configuration before we give it to yeah. the studio down here. So, so this is almost the same example, right? Except that we've yeah, just added, just... before we render the studio, before we render that component, we've just done yeah. async work to pull in you know, some configuration, some other information yeah. from our other services or just preferences. And we've just um, added that into our, into our configuration. Yeah, it's something people have been requesting a lot. Like, can we please have an async schema resolver? Well, put it in next or remix, then now you have that. And you can do it in as many levels as you want, but it never gets more complicated than it needs to be. As you can see, it's just a different, uh, we, just, we just change the config before we give it to the same studio component. There's no more magic than that. And to make things even easier, what I love about V3 is that since it has its own routing, I don't even need to tell it what route it is on to do stuff like selecting the right workspace, for example. Everything just works. It's such a pleasure to work with. And just to demonstrate that this actually work, um, I'm going to uh, just load a studio. And uh, oh, <laughs> there we go. It's a, we have a lot of people on here, so it's slowing it down a little bit, but it still works. So here we, here we have a, a theme selector. What happens here is that when we, I select one of these images, uh, it will read the information you saw on this huge complicated site I showed you earlier that was very hard to work with. And then it applied it on the studio. So you can see it has a nice little pink hue to it. It looks even more interesting in dark mode if you select a, a, like an image that has a lot of interesting information in it. Like the rain one is one of my favorites. Uh, or uh, yeah, but the greenish is also nice, you know? So it's, now we suddenly have this thing where you can just select a picture and suddenly have an entire studio theme. And that's the kind of thing I would never bother to even attempt to create if I didn't have sanity. But with sanity, I just read uh, the image data. I, I can show you the Grok query real quick. It's, just, it's so, it was so much easier than I thought it was. Just get the workspace. And we have this thing called a palette inside of the asset where you fetch the image. That's, a, that's it. That's all. Just one little change to query, and suddenly you can create sanity themes. How cool is that? OK, so you have, you have a little bit of like an inception thing here going, right? Where you have a studio in a studio. How, how far are you going to yes. take that? Well, um, the thing is that if, you, if you're playing with fire, I mean, if you uh, go too deep, uh, we are entering uncharted territories. So I don't know what will happen. We can try it and see. Maybe something interesting will happen. So we'll look. Oh, well, no. Well, maybe we took it a little bit too far. Okay, how do I stop this thing? Oh, that, okay, there go all the, oh, well, uh, well, that was all my studios. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it because <laughs> I don't know how I get it out of there. So well, I, I, I think Cody's done for the week. I think his computer's in all yeah, heated. Black hole ate my, my homework. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. It was really fun to work with this. Yeah, this is this has been a lot of fun uh, to to get on a plane um, and then come back and see <laughs> everything that you pulled together. Um, it's been pretty incredible. And the whole team, like really just the, the things that, um, that folks can build now. Um, I think Kalina and uh, Simeon earlier mentioned like the uh, emergent behavior sort of the, the things that are going to be built that um, we haven't even yes. uh, thought of yet. Like, um, go nuts with this. Really, yeah, really excited. Just go nuts with this. It's like there's, I've never seen any kind of content platform push things this far, and I have no idea how far we can go. Well, maybe the, not this far. Let's be responsible, you know, but yeah. <laughs> Should I just leave this this black hole up? Yeah, I, just... <laughs> I, don't, think it, I, don't, I don't think we can move it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome stuff. I think there's a lot of... Uh, I know, like, there are minds that are being blown, but then there's minds that are, like, kind of glazing over because it's so much. But I yes. hope... 
Um, <laughs> there's a lot to to gather right now. I under I completely understand. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that you all feel supported going forward. Um, the entire team behind this and all of Sanity really is here to support you. So if you have any questions or you just kind of need a little like guidance on where to go or how to do um, or how to have a black hole take over your Sanity studio, um, <laughs> we're here to help. I'm going to put the link in the chat for the uh, discussions and that's where you can um, have your questions, give feedback, or whatever it may be. Daniel, Cody, thank you so much. Daniel, I know you did just get off a flight, uh, so thank you so much <laughs> for being here. <laughs> you would have never known. Um, but yeah, and thank you, Cody, for doing all the demo. That was great. Um, you both did a great job. So thank you so much to you two. Yeah, thanks.